Hello and welcome to Fire of Learning. I'm Justin. From 1933 to 1945, Germany was known as the Third Reich. For these 12 years, Germany was under the rule of the Nazi party, until in 1945, it was defeated in the Second World War. The Reich was abolished, and administration of the nation was divided between the Allied powers. This is a story with which many people are familiar enough, but the question today is, if that was the Third Reich, then what were the First and Second Reichs? In this video, we'll answer that question and more, so without further ado, let's get to it. Before we begin, I would like to thank Van1976, Louise Ricardo, Zach Syme, Bianca, and Bulgarian Empire Mapping for being our most recent supporters on Patreon. They join the supporters who make these videos possible. Bulgarian Empire Mapping, by the way, is actually a fellow history channel. He recently started watching my videos and donated to me without asking anything in return. So I just wanted to give him a shout out and recommend that you check him out when you finish this video. The first point I want to make is that Reich in German is a word that is often translated as empire, but it can also mean realm or domain or something along those lines. Let's go back to Germania, Germany in the time of the Romans. Much of Germany's early history consisted of numerous different tribes with appreciably close languages and cultures living alongside groups like the Celts in a land that the Romans called Germania. These tribes were not unified, and were in fact very fragmented. For a variety of reasons, including geography and the fierceness of these early Germanic peoples, what we now call Germany was never fully ruled over by the Romans. But the two peoples did interact considerably. When the Roman Empire fell in the late 5th century, the vacuum it left was filled by tribes from Germania who moved into the former borders of the empire. Visigoths, Ostrogoths, Vandals, Burgundians, Angles, Saxons, and Franks. The Franks can be thought of as the Proto-French, but their influence on much of Europe, including Germany, is important as well. Quite quickly, their territory encompassed much of modern France, and then, in the 8th century, the stage was set for a very important person named Charlemagne to expand the Frankish Empire from Spain to Italy to much of Germany. Following all these conquests, on Christmas Day in 800 AD, Charlemagne was crowned Emperor of Rome by the Pope, a sort of attempt to revive the Roman Empire which ended up being more symbolic than realistic. This is often where historians place the beginning of what would become the Holy Roman Empire, or in other words, the First Reich. However, Charlemagne's empire collapsed after the death of his son, and it was divided into three, West, Middle, and East Francia. West Francia would evolve into France, Middle Francia, a geographically implausible country, fragmented, and East Francia laid the foundation for Germany. And so the beginning of the First Reich is perhaps better placed at the reign of Otto I, who either revived or began the Holy Roman Empire, depending on how you see it, in 962 AD. Now, whenever historians explain what the Holy Roman Empire was, they'd like to begin with Voltaire's famous quote, that it was not holy, nor Roman, nor an empire. By Voltaire's time, the 18th century, when it was on its last legs, this was certainly true. It was religiously divided between Catholics and Protestants, German, and wasn't really even a state in the modern sense, let alone an empire. However, in the past, the Holy Roman Empire was a force to be reckoned with, and this was true for much of the Middle Ages, but gradually its power declined more and more. The main issue with the empire, which I kind of hinted at, is that it never really became a state in the same way that France or England did. Authority was never centralized. There was an emperor, but the empire consisted of a number of states which might or might not have been willing to listen to him depending on the context. And I don't mean like five or six states, there were hundreds of autonomous regions, eventually well over a thousand. Many were really just the size of cities in the surrounding countryside. Many were even smaller, called Kleinstaaterei, meaning small states the size of towns or monasteries. These states had a habit of not just disagreeing with the emperor, but with each other as well, and war between them was not uncommon. One perfect example was the Seven Years' War, where Austria and Prussia went to war. Prussia both was and was not a part of the empire, as it had territories within and outside of the empire. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. 
Much of medieval and Renaissance German history, therefore, is a story of the emperors, who were often elected by the princes of these states, by the way, trying to get the rulers of these smaller states under their thumbs, or at the very least, on their sides. After the Thirty Years' War, however, which ended in 1648, it was pretty clear that that was not going to happen, and the Holy Roman Empire descended into being what I would call a chariot with no horses, in the sense that it was a territory with a lot of resources, land, and people, but no way of harnessing that potential because it was an administrative nightmare. Still, I like to point out that it lasted for a thousand years. Call it what you will, but there was a method to the madness. The Holy Roman Empire, the First Reich, came to an end in 1806 when it was officially abolished by the Archduke of Austria, who then began calling himself Emperor of Austria, as he was unable to defeat Napoleon's advances into the region. Napoleon conquered much of Germany and reorganized the mess that it was into a collection of larger states called the Confederation of the Rhine. These were puppet states, but when Napoleon was defeated, the German people decided that they liked the new way of doing things, and decided not to revive the old empire. This is not where the Second Reich begins, though. What they formed was the German Confederation, which was a little more of a state but still very disorganized and not very cohesive. But this period, the 19th century, was a time when the spirit of nationalism spread all across Europe, and Germany was no exception. The concept of a German nation had entered the hearts and minds of many Germans, and by the 1840s there were attempts to create such a nation, though they ultimately weren't successful. Still, many now saw the creation of a German state as inevitable. The big question was, who was going to take charge of it? Austria, the traditional head of the German states, or Prussia, which had come to challenge the Austrians in the past century? In the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, sometimes called the Fraternal War, the two sides duked it out, largely over this question, and Prussia came out victorious after a couple of weeks. This led to the formation of the Northern German Confederation, which excluded Austria and Southern Germany, and established Prussia as the dominant player in the region. By 1871, however, the Southern German states, with the exception of Austria, had united with the rest of the Northern Germans, and the nation of Germany, or the German Empire, was proclaimed under Kaiser Wilhelm I, with no small thanks to his Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. Austria, to this day, remains a separate country. Oh, and then there's Liechtenstein too, which is basically the living remnant of the Holy Roman Empire. This German Empire was the Second Reich. It lasted from 1871 to 1918. In that time, Germany became an industrialized world power, home to a number of cultural and scientific advances. It set up colonies in Africa and Asia, and gradually its power came to even rival that of the British. With all these powerful states in Europe, namely Germany now on the scene, the Europeans were starting to get uncomfortable with each other. This tension erupted into the First World War in 1914. Germany was defeated four years later in 1918, the monarchy was abolished, and the Weimar Republic was formed in its place, and that lasted until 1933. And so there you have it. But to recap here, the First Reich was the Holy Roman Empire and the many forms it took, which lasted from 962 to 1806, ending during the Napoleonic Wars. The Second Reich was the German Empire. It lasted from 1871 to 1918, ending with the First World War. If you'd like a more informative look into German history, I've done a two-part documentary on the nation's history, which covers it from ancient Germania right down to today. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then I invite you to come check out the rest of Fire of Learning and to subscribe to keep up with more like it in the future. To help with the cost of production, Fire of Learning does take donations on Patreon, the link to which you can find in the description. You can support the channel with as little as a $1 contribution, however, simply subscribing to our YouTube channel for free is also a large help. A special thanks once again to our Patreon supporters listed here. We are also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, so come check us out there too. Danke for watching.